this was like the three on three thing they were trying some new shit. I remember we were beating this shit out of NSYNC that day, man. And I wonder if they remember that. PR person saw something was like, they gotta show them all. Method Man is out there elbowing Timberlake in the face. We can't have that. <laughs> What's up? This is Method Man right here. And Men's Health asked me to look back at my journey and uh, show how far I've come with my health, my wellness, and all the other fly shit I've done, all right? This is the rewind. <laughs> This is our first photo shoot. This is our original promo pic. Well, this isn't the pic, but promo picture day. Most of the crew wasn't there again. As a matter of fact, this is one of RZA's brothers and Mike, who was a manager for us, road manager for us. He was in the picture and I believe Mookie as well. Just dudes being dudes, you know, being artists, not knowing what the future held at this point in time, but knowing that we had something. I mean, look at the attitude, this is just raw, like straight off the block too, you know? Yeah, I love this, man. Wu-Tang Clan, I mean, we, we were, I mean, we came from an era before the, the, the tour. I mean, we didn't get a tour bus when we went on tour. We had a 15 passenger van, so everybody right there in each other's face, stink breath, Dirty feet, whatever the hell it was, you know? And that th those bonding moments you can never, you know, duplicate or try to recreate. They, they're they organic, they're authentic. So, I mean, and what does that brotherhood look like now? We, we still a bunch of knuckleheads. We still, you know, we don't argue as much as we used to because everybody got kids, not, not even kids, we got adults. It's always, it always feels like a big family reunion. I'm gonna get back around the guys. I think we're more closer than ever than we were back then. So it's good. This was the Source Awards, and um, it was pretty cool because we were like the the the, sh of the night that night. We had one of the hottest albums out. I remember Biggie being there. Anybody that was hot in New York at that time was at that Source Awards. I believe it was in the garden. This particular picture, though, it was just them saying Wu Tang get together, take a picture. All of us wasn't even there either. Like they got the members that they could get at that point in time. And sh I think Dirty was drunk. No, I'm pretty sure Dirty was drunk. Enjoying the spotlight and running into other peers and that were in the industry at that time, other hot acts and things like that, you know. That was always dope. But how come I never saw him prior to being famous? That's the that's the thing about it. You never see these people until you're freaking famous, I think. But um, I don't know, you, you randomly, you, you wind up in Justin's and run into Heavy D, who your mom loves, and you tell him like, my mom loves you, Heavy D. Or you, you run into, you know, Lauren Hill at Fuddruckers in, in the village. You know what I'm saying? And you guys go across the street and into the movie theater, you know, that movie theater in uh, the village, across from the uh, basketball court. I saw Stargate there with Lauren Hill. And, and well, that, that's a typical night, New York, NYC, 90s. I, I, I could never dunk. I mean, I, I'm not good at basketball. I can get by a little bit. I'm not good at basketball at all. I, I never really liked basketball. I was just, uh, I like the contact, full contact sports. That's probably why I did lacrosse, wrestling, and football. But um, I'm tall enough, I can dunk. Not as skilled as some of these other guys, or not even close to skilled as these other guys, but yeah, I think I can. I did a couple of rock and jocks. This was like the three on three thing they were trying, some new, sh new stuff for the rock and jock. And I remember NSYNC was part of it, and we were, we beat them kids up. I wonder if they remember that. And I had KG and Damon Stoudemire, the Mighty Mouse, on the squad, as well as Cameron. Cameron's a GOAT. He the GOAT. I remember we were beating the shit out of NSYNC that day, man. And I, cause the producers came over and was like, guys, guys, can you take it a little easy on the guys? Is that not? I know they didn't ask for it, but the producers saw something or maybe their PR person saw something was like, they gotta show them all. Method Man is out there elbowing Timberlake in the face. We can't have that. Chris Kirkpatrick just got smacked by Redman. You know, shit like that. My style is no style. I would say my style is throw it on. <laughs> Pretty simple, throw it on. I don't know. I, I don't know. We spent a lot more time away from home. I remember uh, being on the road and, and, and thinking like, damn, I can't wait to get back home to tell everybody what we're doing. But it was just that the, the, the pull of my neighborhood that made me want to be there more than on the road. But after a while, it, it, it slowly dwindled to, why am I coming back? And to this day, I, I still, that attraction still, still pulls me back. As far as this picture, I don't even know where the hell I was at, man. We were genuine then. We were like pure still. The, the industry hadn't fucked us up yet. 
Well, I wouldn't say the 90s, but later on, because I was very antisocial. You know, that's just how Wu-Tang rolled and shit. But uh, Shaq? No, they wouldn't be surprised at that. No, no, no. Hmm. Shorter. Yeah. Who I know that's mad famous. I used to holler at all the time. Janet Jackson. Oh, yeah, Janet. Janet Jackson. Yeah, or, and that was with his two, Scott talk, two ways, you know? Back and forth and stuff, but it was always cordial shit. Nothing any, no innuendos or anything like, nothing exciting like that and shit. Yeah, Janet Jackson. Mad cool though, mad super duper cool, man. If y'all don't know Janet Black, I know she black. I know, I know she black. Like y'all think she black enough? Yeah, she is. Teddy black enough. I don't know, I, I say over the years, uh, I never really paid attention to it. You, you, when you're young, your metabolism so fast, you don't even think about, am I gaining too much weight? And I was never one of the fat kids, never one of the bony kids, just somewhere in the middle. My journey started for me later on in life when I just got a, uh, real dissatisfied with everything about myself. And one of the major parts of it was I didn't feel healthy. So I wanted to do something that would not only improve my health, but improve my longevity as far as uh, career and life. Yeah. How old were you when you got 40. I made a New Year's resolution. I was gonna get my GED, because my kids were about to graduate high school. I'm like, they're not getting their high school diploma before I do. Take care of my taxes and get fit. And all of them worked out. All of them worked out. God bless. I'm not locked up for taxes. For me, I was always lucky to have friends that were creative. Uh, my first set of friends in grade school loved comic books. We had a teacher that was dope because she saw we bring the books to school, trade them and stuff like that, take away from my work. So what she did was she made a comic book club that we would do after school. We'd sit there for like an hour after school and create our own comic book. The thing for me that really drew me in about the books were some of the parallels that it drew to real life and especially Marvel because Marvel always patterned their books. They, they lived in real neighborhoods as opposed to DC. Not taking anything away from DC because Superman is tops, Batman is the man, but Spider-Man's from Queens. You know what I mean? Captain America's from Brooklyn. How do you match that? You know what I'm saying? And it's always helped me with reading as well, prove my vocabulary, and just always taught me to think outside the box as well as gave me a moral code. So, you know, when it came to the hip hop, all that plays a part, you know? Your whole life experience has to be on this paper and you only got 16 bars to do it, you're gonna try and throw in as much as you know or as much to express yourself as much as you can in those 16 bars. When I met Mary, I met her in, it was at Puffy's birthday party and Big had wanted me to come through and perform the what with him that night. She came over and said, what's up? And was like, yo, yo, I fuck bring the pain, that's my shit, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I fuck with Love No Limit, that's my shit. And then I didn't see her again until it was time to do the remix because her and Puffy super tight. And she came to the studio and everything. Everything was, it wasn't any tense. It was never any tense feelings in the room ever when Mary's around. She bring the party with her. She's genuine, so it's easy to get along with her. That's simple, that's simple. Minding my business, I just mind my business. After you perform at a club, there's an after party. I didn't make a lot of those. I, I think that's the reason why I stayed out of a lot of trouble. That and, uh, I mean, I had a big crew, you know? Ain't nobody really wanna f with us like that, you did. We didn't have a lot to prove anyone anyway. way. We always came humble. I just think that dudes saw the authenticity of the group and was like, yeah, don't try those n****s. Period. The happiest period in my life was when my children were born. And they're amazing, still to this day. They're adults now, but they're still amazing, man. Like, I'm still learning stuff from them. My son just recently got married, which is fantastic. Yeah, the kids. Just kids. What I attribute to being in the shape that I'm in, consistency, lifestyle, commitment, wanting to see what the next level looks like and if there is one. This picture, however, though, um, this was when I did Men's Health the first time. And you guys came through it was super early in the morning and it was, it was, that was a pretty good morning and shit because I started my journey working out 4 a.m. in the morning. I would go to the gym. This had went on for like three months straight. But what, it, what I attribute it to is strong discipline and mental capacity to know what I wanted and, and, and to fight for it every day. I feel pretty accomplished, but you, you can never be too comfortable. I would say being the best grandpa, uh, the most fit grandpa. There you go. Boom. Bang. And um, the thing that's going to keep me motivated in that right now is Jordy, my, my grandbaby. He's a good guy, man. He's very strong, though. His hands are huge. I feel sorry for any kid that gets into a fight with him. Hey, this is Method Man, man. 
Signing off for Men's Health, drink water, and mind your business.